Welcome to today's Coaster Hour interview, where I'm going to be talking with and asking questions to Tyler Mullins, who is one of the design engineers for Skyline Attractions. Before we get into this interview, if you could introduce yourself and tell people who you are, that would be absolutely fantastic. Yeah, thank you for having me. My name is Tyler Mullins. I'm one of the design engineers with Skyline Attractions. I've been with Skyline for about four years now, where I've had the chance to work on some of the recent projects, including our partnership with Great Coasters, as well as our new lineup of Children's Roller Coasters Piscetti Bowl, which I'm excited to talk about today. That's awesome. And so with our first set of questions, I'm going to be going into questions to kind of let us get to know you and Skyline better. My first question, pretty simple. What is Skyline Attractions and what products do you make? Yeah, Skyline Attractions is an Orlando, Florida-based amusement ride design and manufacturing firm. We were actually founded by three of the three of the four founders who were previously at Great Coasters. They wanted the opportunity to kind of innovate beyond just wood roller coasters. So some of our earlier products include children's rides like the Crazy Couch, as well as our compact steel roller coasters. We also offer a line of new children's coasters called the Biscetti Bowl. And we've been able to retain a wonderful relationship with Great Coasters, where we still offer our design and our engineering services to them. Awesome. And it's great to see, like, because three of the four founders were from GCI, it's awesome to see that they kept that relationship, uh, but also got to do some things that they couldn't do probably at um, GCI. So uh, just great to see that. My second question I have is more specifically for you and your job within Skyline, but as a design engineer for Skyline, what are some of your responsibilities? I think given Skyline's small but mighty size, we wear a lot of hats. So some of my responsibilities uh, recently have included some of the technical documentation like ride manuals, maintenance procedures, uh, quality assurance programs, assisting with some of the ride proposals for parks. This is both for Skyline and for Great Coasters, as well as drawing creation for parks and assemblies. And I've also had the chance to create and maintain the website. I run a lot of the social media as well as the monthly newsletter. Wow, you're really busy having to control the social media, all the manuals. Uh, that's a lot. And that that's, I mean, more than I was expecting for sure. But that's really cool that you handle all that. So uh, I got to give props to you for that. My third question is, um, what originally got you into coasters and into the amusement industry? Yeah, I've always loved roller coasters, always loved theme parks. I had the chance to grow up down the street from Kings Island. I had season passes there all through my childhood. So I loved going there, riding the rides. When I was old enough, I loved working there. I worked at Adventure Express, as well as the Drop Tower, the Bat. My last two summers there, I worked in Planet Snoopy. Um, I loved every season I spent there, and it was a wonderful opportunity. Uh, in addition to growing down up down the street from Kings Island, I also played Roller Coaster Tycoon as a kid. I was always on roller coaster forums. And when it went when it came to college and getting a job, getting a career, I wanted to work in the theme park industry. I went to Ohio State where I was a member of the school's theme park engineering group, which is a really great student organization focused on the theme park industry. Through the group, I was able to uh, go on some really cool behind the scenes tours at Kings Island at Cedar Point, attend things like IAPA and ASTM and network, all which led to an eventual internship with Great Coasters and then a role with Skyline Attractions after I graduated. That's awesome to hear. And actually, if I could use uh, ask this as a follow up, uh, you're so yeah, you grew up going to Kings Island. So from my understanding, you were involved with Mystic Timbers in some way. So how was that? Yeah, it was a dream come true. Um, when I had the chance to intern at Great Coasters, it was in fall of 2016 when Great Coasters had their office in Florence, Kentucky. So I would commute the 45 minutes every day down there and I got the chance to work on Mystic Timbers, which, as you said, was my home park. I grew up there. I love Kings Island. Working on such a great ride at such a great park was fantastic. Um, during the internship, I also had the chance to work on a couple of the company's rides in China, as well as in Dater at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. So it was a really great experience because a lot of what I was doing there ultimately transferred to what I'm now doing at Skyline with our partnership with Great Coasters. Yeah, that that's incredible. And it, it that's just so cool. I find that like just incredible that it's like you got one of the like coaster projects you got to do was one that was literally at the home at your home park, the one you grew up going to. So uh, that's awesome. And of course, all the other coasters you mentioned, 
Invader, some of the Chinese projects and it transferring over to Skyline. That's that's just awesome. My next um, segment of questions are going to be questions and topics for me that are a little more specific, uh, just with some things that you're focusing on right now. Um, but my first question relates to the recent Pischetti Bowl coaster you announced, and that is that how did the idea of the Pischetti Bowl coaster come to be, and why did you go for a weld-free single rail track design? I think when it comes to why we chose to create and introduce the Pischetti Bowl is we looked at the market for children's roller coasters from American manufacturers, and it is incredibly stagnant. If you are a park and you want to build a children's roller coaster from an American company, what you have available today is pretty comparable to what was available 25 years ago. There's been very little innovation. So we saw the opportunity to bring something new and creative to the industry. And I think Pischetti Bowl really fits that bill. Um, you mentioned the single rail design. That is actually kind of just a byproduct of its weld-free design. The track does not have any welds. It's all riveted together. And this allows for better quality control because we're able to fabricate the track in-house. It allows for cheaper fabrication cost, as well as some really great opportunities to be able to theme the track. This is a first of its kind thing for a roller coaster. Uh, just because most roller coasters are tubular steel, you really don't have that surface area to make it look like a slithering snake or a runaway railroad or whatever you want to do, which would fit perfectly for a family entertainment center, for a small park or for a children's section at a park. Yeah, I mean, just looking from the footage when you guys announced this thing, I was pretty impressed with the uh, single rail design, which you said is more a product of it being weld free, but that's still just really cool visual for sure. But the theming you can do on it is just like, whoa, like I've never seen really anything like this on any other coaster. So the fact that you're able to implement that is insane. If for those who haven't seen the videos, uh, make sure to check them out. They look really cool. So uh, awesome to go into that. It's going to open up, sorry, it's going to open up a lot of doors as well for parks. Um, just because if you have like maybe a Santa themed amusement park, they can make it look like a candy cane or like a snowy hill. And I think a lot of parks that typically do not have the ability to theme their rides very with a lot of detail, this is going to give them a lot of opportunity they didn't have before. So I think we're going to see a lot of it in the coming future. Yeah, the possibilities are really endless. Like just just from the concept that I've seen and everything, it it's crazy. So uh, that's awesome. My next question is going to go into uh, Skyline Attractions, your relationship with GCI. So uh, how is that like and how do you help each other out? Yeah, I think it's a really great partnership that benefits both Skyline and GCI. Uh, as mentioned, three of the four founding members of Skyline previously worked at Great Coasters. And while they were there, they were able to design and engineer rides like Evil Knievel, which is now American Thunder, um, Gold Striker, the humongous updates to Ghost Rider and some other attractions, as well as some of the big ones out in China. But they wanted to expand beyond wood coasters and kind of innovate, offer some other products. But we've been able to maintain that really great relationship. We now offer all of our design and engineering services. So we still have the chance to do these really cool, fun layouts. We're able to work with them on some of their new products like Tights and Track and the Infinity Flyer Train. Um, and it's just overall been a fantastic relationship. And I think it's allowed for a lot of really great innovation and a lot of really exciting rides over the past few years and over the coming years. It certainly looks like it. Uh, just the expanding of really both your companies, like just have a new company that can focus on more steel coaster and uh, other projects that GCI wouldn't necessarily consider. But also we'll get to it a little later, but the Titan track I mean, that's a big deal for GCI. And so seems to be a fantastic relationship you have there. My third question is um, about your thrilling coaster models, specifically with your Skywarp and Horizon installations. And that is that, um, what have you learned from your first Skywarp and Horizon installations and how have you applied it to your improved versions you showed at IAPA this year? Yeah, I think we definitely learned some lessons over the first installation and then the second. Uh, the first one was a prototype, and after we built it, we were able to learn a lot of ways that we can improve future ones. This includes the track fabrication methods, column to track connections, the car, the bogey design, as well as sound concerns. We were able to address all of these with the second one, which is Tidal Twister at SeaWorld San Diego. Tidal Twister is a really great family ride. Um, it's quantifiably quieter than its predecessor, and it needed to be with the marine life nearby. 
it's really great for riders who are maybe not yet brave enough or ready to ride things like electric eel or the upcoming emperor because it still goes upside down but it's relatively low to the ground it's a good fun speed that makes it accessible to children to grandparents everyone in between uh, with our next generation of these rides, we're incredibly excited because we're able to redesign, re-engineer additional things. As mentioned, the track, we now have a rivet-free track, which is very similar to the Skeddy Bulls track and Titan track. This allows us to build it and fabricate it all in-house. We have a brand new train design with inline seating. This allows for better field of vision, as well as an over-the-shoulder lap bar restraint, which we're really excited about. In addition, we have a brand new drive system, which should be able to accelerate, decelerate the trains much more efficiently and smoothly. Just across the board, there's a lot of humongous improvements and um, enhancements. So I'm really excited to see Skywarp 2, Orbit 2, and Horizon 2 out there. And I think they're gonna be really great family thrill rides. It's just, it's great to hear that. I mean, and I guess this is really needed, but um it's with the first um project uh obviously it probably didn't go the way you necessarily wanted but you took what you found from that and really improved upon it and with title twister you could see those improvements i have not ridden it yet but it seems like a great fit for sea world san diego and you're applying it now to the next generation so that's uh that's really good to see my next question is going to go into the infinity flyer train so uh, what are the Infinity Flyer trains going to do that the previous Millennium Flyers could not? The Infinity Flyers are so, so exciting. It's one of my favorite things that we've had the chance to create for Great Coasters. Uh, these trains are able to navigate tighter turns, tighter crest. That allows them to do a lot more crazy, compact elements. They have 80% fewer welds than their predecessors, which means less maintenance, less non-destructive testing which parks love because it really saves time and cost when it comes to the annual comprehensive maintenance. Uh, we also have improved modularity. This makes it much easier to adjust them for chain lifts, for launches, for the brake runs. And these trains are great on existing rides or brand new rides. We also have the ability with the class five restraints, we're able to go upside down, we're able to have negative airtime, we're able to do so many things that the Millennium Flyer train is not capable of, capable of doing. Um, we had the chance to test Infinity Flyers. I don't know, I don't think most people know this, but we had white lightning down at Fun Spot America. It was closed for a few days. We were able to put an Infinity Flyer train on it. All the park was still open and we had the ride to ourselves for a couple of days. I've always found it funny that no one ever noticed that happened because anybody there that day could have easily taken a picture, put it on Twitter, but it went completely under the radar but we've had the chance to work on the Infinity Flyer trains over the past few years. We're so, so excited for them to be unveiled on a roller coaster in the near future. Um, and they're really gonna, they're the next generation of wood roller coaster trains. There's so much potential with them. That's fantastic to hear about. It probably a lucky stretch at Fun Spot in terms of coaster enthusiasts not being there uh, for those few days. <laughs> Uh, I, I just find that really funny that like no one noticed that uh, you had put the Infinity Flyers on there, which I mean, that's a pretty big deal. And uh, in terms of the inversions and the uh, negative airtime, I guess more like uh, ejector airtime. I mean, the GCI coasters already uh, just from the ones I, are, I've ridden, uh, they're really good. They're fantastic. So the fact that you're going to be able to do some things now that are going to make them even more dynamic and just, um, I would say, yeah, I, dynamic, I think is the perfect word for it. it it's just like um, kind of mind blowing because it's like the ride's already so good and you're finding ways to make it better. So awesome to hear about that. My next question is going to go into the Titan track. And my question for that is, why was the Titan track created and what will it be capable of doing? So Titan track, just like the Piscetti Bowl track or the track for Skywarp 2 and the similar compact steel coasters we've done, Titan track is weld free, which really helps make it easier to fabricate, easier to inspect, easier to maintain, as well as more affordable for a lot of parks. Um, the rivets are also very easy to visually check, and the track is able to navigate a lot of really cool elements, a lot of inversions and other things that just wood roller coaster track cannot. Uh, we still love wood roller coaster track, of course, and we love wooden roller coaster rides. Titan track can be used to enhance them. You can add an inversion or something fun and thrilling to an existing wood coaster, to a brand new wood coaster, 
or you can have a full layout made with tights and track. So the opportunities are really endless. If you've had the chance to ride White Lightning in the past year or so, we've had a 55 foot section of test track of tights and track on it. And it has been a phenomenal test. That 55 foot section of the ride is incredibly smooth. It's very quiet. It is so promising of the future for this technology. Yeah, the versatility of the track is really what stands out to me. The fact that you can put it on existing coasters, as you mentioned, or you can use it to create like inversions or even make full coasters with the new track. That is pretty big deal. So uh, looking forward to seeing more of that in the future. And then my last question I have, and this is about IAPA, happened about probably by the time this comes out, probably about two months ago. So my question with that is, uh, how was the interest and response level from IAPA like this year from potential customers? IAPA was phenomenal. Um, first off, it's so great to have the event back after it was not held in 2020. We had a tremendous amount of interest in the Piscetti Bowl Children's Coaster and Skywarp 2 and the other compact steel roller coasters, as well as our design and engineering services. Um, it's a really, really bright future for both the theme park industry and for Skyline. And we're really excited to uh, move forward with a lot of these exciting projects. Great to hear. And it's awesome also to hear that the Piscetti Bull Coaster got a lot of interest. It really seems like a model with a lot of potential, especially as you said earlier, because kitty coasters that are U.S. made, not really a whole lot of innovation in the last 20 or so years. So uh, really, really awesome that that's getting a lot of interest. And so, I mean, that's, that's great to hear from you that that went well. My next segment of questions are going to be the, the final segment of questions. This is questions from the viewers. So for those of you watching, I actually post um, before I do an interview who I'm going to be interviewing with and give you an opportunity to ask questions either through Instagram, YouTube community post or Discord. So if you don't follow those yet, make sure to. Uh, but my first question I have is one that is actually from uh, multiple people, and that is, do you have any tips or recommendations for becoming a coaster designer? This is one of my favorite questions because I was an engineering student not too long ago, and I was trying to get into the theme park industry for a career. So I love being able to answer it and hopefully help out future roller coaster engineers and designers. Um, I actually have a small list of tips and advice I usually, like I like to give. First one is engineering is important. I would definitely pursue mechanical engineering, civil engineering, maybe electrical engineering, but make sure you do engineering in school. If you're able to join a group like the theme park engineering group at Ohio State, there's been an explosion of these student organizations across all these colleges. Um, and they're really great tools because they help you make connections, help you attend really great things like ASTM and IAPA. My third piece of advice is to do things that separate you from other students you're probably taking the same courses as everyone else who's going for the same degree as you. So you really want to stand apart from them. We've had a lot of really, um, we've interviewed and we've hired people who have done really great and interesting projects, whether it be through a class or even just on their own time. This includes things with 3D printing, things with programming, just things that help you stand apart. And then make sure you maintain connection with a lot of these people that you're meeting at things like IAPA and ASTM. Uh, when these companies need to hire people, you want to be first in mind. You want them to remember you because you had stayed in touch, that you had stayed connected with them. And my final piece of advice is designing roller coasters is dream come true for so many people, but the theme park industry is very big and there's a lot of other great opportunities. I would not ignore them. For example, everyone knows the big roller coaster manufacturers, but there's also the companies that do theme park master planning like AOA or JRA. There's companies that do theming like Nassau, Scenario, animatronic companies like Animax, Life Formations. These are all fantastic companies, fantastic opportunities. So I definitely would not discount them. And I would definitely explore all these different possible um, companies if you're looking to work in the theme park industry. It's just, it's like just fantastic to have these useful tips from someone within the industry. And it's also great that you mentioned some alternatives because Sometimes that is the route that you kind of have to uh, look towards just with things happening. And it may not necessarily, it might be the best route for some people. So um, sometimes you find that out afterwards. So really awesome that you went into that. Uh, and I really appreciate the in-depth answer there. 
My second thing I have is a question from Imperial Coasters, and he was asking, do you have a favorite GCI project you have been a part of? I have two. Um, one of them is Mystic Timbers, because as noted, I grew up near Kings Island. Being able to work on a ride at my home park was dream come true. Really, really fun. And the ride's phenomenal. Um, it's such a great, fun family thrill coaster. Anytime I get up to Kings Island now, since I now live down in Florida, I always make sure I ride Mystic Timbers. My other one, I wish I could say more, but it's not publicly announced yet, but I will say there's one other one. And I loved it because I had the chance to work on a lot of things I haven't really done before on a coaster. Um, so being able to take ownership over parts of it is exciting and it's gonna be a phenomenal coaster. And I cannot wait for more information to be revealed about it. Definitely something to look forward to. Uh, hopefully we'll find out in the near future relatively soon what that project is. It sounds exciting. Um, but yeah, Mystic Timbers, obviously that one also has to be up there because as we mentioned, your home park. So uh, obviously that's got to be a favorite. My third question is from Western New York Coasters. Uh, and he was wondering, will we be seeing the Titan track utilized on more coasters uh, relatively soon? I think the very short answer is yes. I don't think I can go into too many specifics, but as noted, it's great for not only ground up rides, but also ride refurbishments, ride enhancements, just because there's so many opportunities with it. So it's a very bright future for the product. Yeah, I mean, not too surprised you can't go too much into it, but uh, certainly will be exciting to see it get utilized uh, in the near future. So I'm excited to see it. Our next question is from Coaster Shardark, and he was asking, what can you tell us about Bombay Express and its layout specifically? This is the GCI coaster in Dubai, for those who don't know. Yeah, Bollywood Parks Dubai is opening a new wooden roller coaster in the near future. They've been selective on what they've chosen to share, so we also, out of respect, are a little selective on what we're sharing. But it's a really cool record-breaking ride. Um, has, they have said it has more airtime moments than any other coaster on the planet, which is just wild. It's also a really cool ride just because of how it is built and how you interact with the structure. Uh, I'm really excited for Bollywood Parks Dubai to share more information, hopefully in the near future about it. And I'm excited for it to open up as well. Yeah, it's certainly in terms of wooden coaster projects, it's certainly one of the more intriguing but mysterious ones uh, <laughs> I've, I've looked at in a long time. So um, I, I can't wait to learn more about it once we can. And then our last question comes from Civilian Satellite. Uh, and they were wondering, what issues did the pandemic present for developing upcoming rides such as Bombay Express, Roaring Timbers, and potentially some other ones that uh, may be coming down the line? I think the pandemic definitely turned the amusement industry on its head. Um, it delayed a lot of plans across the industry, a lot of companies. I know a lot of parks are holding their breath before pulling the trigger on their next big project now. So we're very grateful that we had rides like the one at Bollywood Parks Dubai, as well as Roaring Timbers at Tom Island in Vietnam. Those were already in the process of being built. They had already been designed and engineered. Um, I think the pandemic also showcased the necessity of some low cost rides, both in terms of children's roller coasters, as well as our compact steel coasters. And I think that we've actually seen an uptick in interest because of it. Um, and as you mentioned, the Tom Island, the one in Vietnam, I think that one's funny because not only is the one in Dubai a mysterious coaster, but the one in Vietnam was fully built before anyone even knew it was there, which for months and months, I was checking all these Vietnamese news websites and just waiting for someone to finally notice this roller coaster was being built. Never happened. It wasn't even publicly showcased or acknowledged until it was fully built, which I don't think we're ever going to see that again in the amusement industry. I think that was just the perfect combination of, you know, the park wasn't open with COVID and it was an on, on an island in Vietnam. I just think it's a very funny situation though, but I'm excited for that one. Yeah. I mean, that coaster, the setting that Roaring Timbers is going to have, it looks really special. It's literally like pretty much in the jungle. I mean, that is, uh, it looks beautiful. Um, and then in terms of the pandemic, um, like it, it's, I guess like, yeah, having like the low cost rides uh, or the lower cost rides 
uh, certainly they have their purpose and it's great to see that parks are willing to still get new rides, um, but get these ones that, that like pretty much works out perfectly for you guys. So that's, uh, that's really good. From this point, uh, I think we've answered all the questions. So if you have anything you want to talk about specifically that we didn't necessarily cover in the questions, uh, you can talk about it at this point if you would like. Yeah, one thing I want to share is at Skyline, we do a lot of really fun, cool stuff, both in terms of our own products, as well as stuff for great coasters and other companies and manufacturers. And when we're able to, we love to share it. And we actually have a monthly newsletter So whether you are a member of the media, an engineering student, a coaster enthusiast, regardless, you are more than welcome to subscribe to the newsletter, stay in the know on some of these exciting projects, including some really, really exciting ones that are upcoming. And I cannot wait to share more information about both in terms of great coasters as well as other exciting rides. But I think the future is really bright for Skyline as well as for the amusement industry. Yeah, that's that's great to hear. And yeah, that newsletter, it's got some good stuff. So make sure to check it out if you haven't already. And skylineattractions.com slash newsletters. I should probably tell you where it's at. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, and that, not I, I was able to find it, so it shouldn't be too hard. Yeah. Um, but there you go. I guess before we wrap this up, just wanted to say uh, thank you so much, Tyler, for coming on. It was an absolute blast, like just hearing some insight with Skyline, the new wooden coaster projects, along with the Pischetti Bowl uh, and your um, thrilling coaster concepts. Great, great to hear all about it. And it was awesome. And I really appreciate you taking the time to do this interview. So if you have any last things to say before we uh, end this, uh, now would be the time. Thank you again for having me. It was an absolute pleasure. Awesome. So once again, huge thanks to Tyler from Skyline for coming on. And for those of you who are watching this video, if you could share this video on social media, that would be huge in growing this interview series, as I want to bring more people on who work within the amusement industry on for interviews and sharing this video will help out a lot. I am in discussions with some other people won't reveal too much right now, but certainly there is more to look forward to. So very excited to get that going. And my other thing I have to say with that is if you have someone in mind you would like me to interview in the future, let me know in the comments down below um, just so I can see it and maybe I can get that to work out. So that would be great if you could do that. With all of that said, thank you all for watching and I will see you all next time here on Coaster Hour.